Well, this next story is out of Texas tonight, where two teenagers now face capital murder charges. At the center of this story, 17-year-old Zephyrina Trevino and 19-year-old Philip Baldenegro. Both are accused of a deadly shooting that happened in August of 2019, but Trevino claims that she isn't guilty because she was being sex trafficked by the young man. Baldenegro's attorney calling the sex trafficking allegations a smokescreen. This case takes a new step next week. Both sides sat down for their first national interviews with News Nation correspondent Marky Martin. She joins us live tonight in Dallas with the very latest on this story. Marky. Marnie, this story making waves and it is far from over. And what you're about to see is my sit down interviews with both sides. And just for clarity, Zephaniah throughout this story, you will hear referred to as Zephy. And now both sides are asking the court of public opinion because we were not granted those public records. They're begging to be believed. There are two sides to every story. Remember, if you want to, if you want to say something that you don't want recorded, just say this is off the record. Okay. Okay. In this case, that story is now a national headline. Two Texas teenagers charged with capital murder, one denying culpability, alleging she was being sex trafficked by the other, family. And legal representation for both sides speaking and out to News Nation. And this is happening in America. This is happening every day. This happened to my child. It can happen to anyone, any class, any race. I wouldn't be going public with this information unless I had this avalanche of Hollywood, Kim Kardashian, Jamie Lee Curtis, jihad saying that my guy was a sex trafficker. It was the summer of 2019 in Grand Prairie, Texas, when Zephaniah Trevino and Philip Baldenegro started spending time together. Baldenegro's attorney, David Finn, says the two were high school classmates and dating. It was a boyfriend, girlfriend, romantic relationship. 18-year-old guy, 16-year-old girl, they did what kids do. Zephaniah's mother, Crystal, and family attorney, Justin Moore, say they vehemently disagree. We have evidence that shows great abuse from this man against his child. So I believe their relationship was one of uh, predator and prey. When we met Philip, um, he was introduced as a friend and always was maintained as this is my friend. But Crystal says the relationship was far from friendly. Now claiming that her daughter was being sex trafficked by Baldenegro, living under threats, forced to engage in violent, non-consensual activity. She would isolate herself. She would not talk a lot. She was losing weight. She would leave out of the house in one outfit and come home in something totally inappropriate. Clothes that we didn't buy her. Finn calling the sex trafficking allegations against his client a false narrative. He says he's reviewed both teen cell phones, records he plans to show in court, but can't release since the case involves a juvenile. He says texts and images on Zephaniah's phone don't show a girl fearing for her safety, but one who reveled in rebellion. If that's the case, what about all these pictures of you smoking dope and having sex with all these other guys? Were you forced to do all of that that you recorded on your own? In her phone, she's looking for guns all the time. For months, searching Glock, Glock, starter pistol, Glock 38, pages of it. And then in August of 2019, both teams agree that Zephaniah and Baldenegro were hanging out in an apartment with a third acquaintance, Jesse Martinez. That apartment becoming the scene of an armed robbery turned murder. What we know is that two grown men showed up to Philip Baldenegro's apartment to purchase sex from the child. The child being Zephaniah. Baldenegro's attorney agrees, saying that in an attempt to rob those two men, they were lured to the apartment under false pretenses. But he says Zephaniah was the mastermind. So Zephy's texting these guys, pretending that her name is Julie, the 14-year-old that's going to have sex, and then her. So these guys think they're in there, they're going to bring weed and coke and Xanax and have a big old party and these guys are going to have sex with underage girls. Philip Baldenegro and another adult accomplice uh, savagely beat these two men. They pistol whipped them. They then followed them out into the parking lot. They savagely beat them again. And Mr. Baldenegro ended up murdering one of the pedophiles over there to purchase this young child. The 24-year-old shooting victim dead on scene. The second man who showed up suffered only minor injuries. 
advocates for Zephaniah, keeping many details of what happened that night close to the chest, but say that any involvement on her end was forced, adding that because she is a child, it was legally impossible for her to make those decisions on her own. She didn't know she had a voice. She didn't. I don't know the horrors and the details, but those were grown men, grown men that looked at my child and we're going to abuse her, rape her, do whatever they did to her. The case garnering worldwide attention. Zephaniah drawing celebrity support from the likes of Kim Kardashian West, Selena Gomez, Jamie Lee Curtis even taking out a full page ad in the Dallas Morning News backing the young girl. A GoFundMe page to raise defense funds for the Trevinos has raised just over $100,000, and a petition seeking justice is closing in on 400,000 signatures. Jamie Lee Curtis has got a platform. Kim Kardashian. Kardashian's got a platform, and I think they mean well. I think that they have been used. I think they've been misguided. I think they've been deceived. David Finn has also said this idea of Zephaniah calling herself um, a sex trafficking victim is to garner sympathy. Is there any truth to that from your team? David Finn is a monster. His comments that she's trying to garner sympathy completely disgusting. Do you know how hard it is for any victim of any situation to speak up and not be heard? It's hard. It's very hard. So how can you say that? And so you're sure beyond a reasonable doubt that this accusation coming from her family and her team is false? Absolutely. Both teens are currently out on bond. Crystal says her daughter, the one who was on the school softball and volleyball teams, an honor student who sang in the church choir on Sundays, now spending what could be her final days at home in an ankle monitor, focusing on online school and family. She says if Zephaniah is found guilty, life as she knew it, is gone. She doesn't have a driver's license. She didn't get to work her first job. She hasn't graduated. She hasn't crossed the stage. She won't get to go to prom. She, you know, these are life moments that, you know, we all got to take a part of. She won't get that. She won't. And as for Philip Baldinegro, his attorney left us with this. Did my guy make a terrible mistake? Yeah. Are we going to plead guilty to armed robbery? You bet you we are. Because he's guilty of armed robbery, and he's going to pay a price for that. Did he traffic that girl? No way in hell. Now, next week comes a monumental step in the case on Monday. Zephaniah will have her adult certification hearing, where the state will decide whether or not to try her as an adult. Now, we reached out to the Dallas County DA for comment. He declined to do so. Zephaniah's team also saying they have tried for months to meet with him, but to no avail. If she is tried as an adult, she does face life in prison. And Zephaniah Trevino turns 18 come February. Reporting live in Dallas tonight, Marky Martin, News Nation.